Hi guys, um, yeah, I'm laughing a little bit because I tried to, <laughs> I tried to make this video a couple of times. I didn't like it. Well, okay, I we start from the beginning. I touched on the topic of forgiveness a couple of days because I find it very important, and the Lord also and God the Father finds it important that we keep on harping on this subject, forgiveness of sins for the believer. Why is this so important? When you know that you are forgiven from from your entire life of sins. This is important for your conscience, it's important for your peace of mind, for your health, for your finances, for every single blessing that the Lord uh, accomplished for us by His finished work at the cross to be manifested in our lives by the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Spirit I've said many times and the Bible says so, bears witness with the truth. This forgiveness of sins is something that um, I don't hear often preached. And what I um, want to emphasize now on it is because every day we uh, fall into sin or we have things that we want to get rid of. So the more you know that you're forgiven, the more your conscience is in peace, the more you see yourself as the forgiven person at, the, at God's right hand, seated, seated with Christ at the right hand of God, the more every sin issue and everything that you're struggling with will just um, melt down, melt away is a butter on a hot day. So I want first to give you the book of 1 John chapter 2 verse 12 and I take the Amplified Bible. I'm writing to you little children, believers, dear ones, because your sins have been forgiven you for his name's sake. You have been pardoned and released from spiritual debt through his name because you have confessed his name, Jesus' name, believing in him as savior. The first thing that I want to emphasize is that your sins have been forgiven for those of you who speak English. Now, my English is not my mother uh, language, but uh, for those of you who speak and understand English, that's past tense, right? The second of all is that um, at the end of this verse, it says, those of you who are, who are believing in him as savior, in Jesus as savior. Are you believing every day that Jesus is your savior? He is your savior. That's why you believed on him. You are his own. You will never perish. He gives you eternal life. He gave it to you already. So this forgiveness of sins, the fact that you believe in Jesus as your savior every day, and he's the lover of your soul, all your sins are forgiven, your everyday sins. Another Bible verse, uh, but before that, wait, I was thinking about Romans chapter 5, verse 6, uh, no, Romans chapter 3, I think, I'm sorry, <laughs> when it says that all have fallen short of the glory of God, but uh, this gift of righteousness that Jesus accomplished is to everyone in the, for everyone in the world, but comes on those who believe. So you see, when you believe on Christ, this gift of righteousness is your inheritance. This is something you need to study. You need to be conscious of that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So another verse that I want to go to is again the book of 1 John chapter 2 verse 1 and 2. And John is writing to the believers here in Christ. And, um, that's why he's saying, My little children, these things write I to you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So you see, first of all, John calls the um, believers there, my little children. It is a term of endearment. We are God's children. We are not sinners anymore. These things I write unto you that you sin not. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. We have his present tense. What is the function of Jesus at the right hand of God at this moment. He is our advocate and he is the propitiation of our sin, of our sins. Uh, when you look at the word propitiation in the Greek is the word he last mos and it means expiator, atonement. When I looked for the synonyms of the word expiator, it means atonable. So the function of Jesus at the right hand of God is an atonable function. He is our atoning sacrifice. The reason that Jesus went on that cross is to be the atoning sacrifice for your sins. God didn't want to punish us. He punished his son. He didn't want to condemn us. He condemned his sons and his son. And now when Jesus is at the right hand of God, um, at, the, at the majesty on high, when God looks at Jesus, he knows and he sees that all our sins are forgiven. It's not like this, that you, you do something, you, um, the devil tricked you or trick you on some uh, point in your life, in some area of your life, and then now you have to confess your sin. I'm uh, very sorry, actually I'm not, to disappoint those who believe that confessing of, sin, confessing of sins is something for the believer. Now, when you, you know you're forgiven and you've done something wrong, you say sorry to God, right? You say sorry to your wife, you say sorry to your friend. That, like, it's, it's logical. But this will not give you forgiveness of sins. You don't confess in order to be forgiven. If this was the case, uh, John in chapter 2 would have said to the believers, 
if any of you sin, confess your sins. No, John wanted to uh, encourage the believers and to assure them that they have an advocate with the Father. They have a representative in the form of, uh, um, in the form of human, because Jesus is not also God; He's also human. Is the uh, our is the uh, head of the new human race, the new creation in Christ. So we have a representative, and when the Father looks at Him. He knows that you're forgiven. He knows what Jesus did at the cross. And that's the reason that the Father can bless you, that the Father can work in your life and any help that you need from Him, He will give it to you because of Jesus. Uh, I wanted to talk about this a little bit because it seems to me that um, when I see reactions and comments of fellow believers and that fellow believers are afraid of certain sins in their lives and they have uh, certain issues with addictions and all kinds of stuff that sti still linger in their lives, uh, dear child of God, beloved, wonderful, amazing, beautiful child of God, as beautiful as Jesus and as righteous as Him, the Father loves you as much as He loved Jesus. Jesus Himself said in the Gospel of John these words, With the Father, with the love my Father loves me, I love them also. And as much as the Father loves me, this as much the Father loves you also. So, you know, the um, disciple of John, the disciple who Jesus loves, is all about love, love, love. And honestly, I don't care for the religious leaders who think that this is basic. To be honest to you, um, the love of God sent His Son because He loved us, died for our sins. It's not the other way around that we have to perform and God loves us, you know? You, you know. Even on your bad days, God loves you, man, I'm telling you. So don't forget this. You have been forgiven child of God. You have been washed by the blood of Jesus. You have been sanctified. It means set apart. Your process of sanctification, of holiness, is a lifelong process. Give yourself time. Just feed on the forgiveness of um uh, that Jesus accomplished for you. Jesus is the measure of your forgiveness. If God can ever condemn Christ at his right hand, if God the Father can ever condemn Jesus, he also can condemn us. So this is impossible, we, know, we all know that. You have been forgiven, you have been justified, and you have been blessed. Enjoy this forgiveness, enjoy your life as a Christian, and uh, everything that you need will uh, soon I wanted to say sooner or later, but with God, uh, I don't believe in later. So uh, it will soon, as soon as possible, manifest. I wish you all good evening and see you soon. Bye.